So I've been doing yoga for over two years now and I hear a lot of opinions and observations about the practice, both on and off the mat and from yogis and non-yogis. Today I wanted to discuss my viewpoints on the issue of whether yoga is just gymnastics but with a spiritual accent to it or whether it's something a lot more. I will be covering a few points like intention, heart-based practicing, knowledge of scripture and a little more. It'll be an interesting video as I delve deep into the nuances of what yoga really means. Most people upon hearing the word yoga often attach some esoteric tinge to the activity and a perplexing, sometimes even automatic, respect is given to the practitioner. In truth, respect is earned over this or past lifetimes and is rarely assumed with a singular activity. Although one could argue that yoga is not a singular activity at all, but an all-encompassing lifestyle in which the physical practice is just one aspect of. This would certainly be the case uh, for Ashtanga practitioners, for example, which I'll be exploring in a little while. First, let's have a look at the word yoga itself, which is translated into yoke, or joining one to another. Normally, uh, in the context of yoga and spirituality, this would refer to merging the self with the ultimate cosmic consciousness, which you may call God or spirit. It really doesn't matter, as the spirit predates any language formed on Earth anyway. As Kierkegaard said, once you name me, you negate me. So here's where it gets a little complicated. Even though we're joining ourselves with the UCC, or Ultimate Cosmic Consciousness, we're actually defining and identifying what is not us, such as the ego, and surrendering to the truth that is already there, underneath all the conditioning, egoic thoughts, upbringing habits, for instance. Once we do this, we find that we are one with the rest of the universe, no different than a leaf or a tree, just simply a little more complex in nature. I mean, think about it, what is it that makes us so different from everything else? A brain? Every animal on Earth has one. A consciousness, perhaps? Even a snow leopard will discriminately kill a prey but protect its cubs. Moral decision making is not exclusive to the species of man. Even our veins, leaves on a tree, have the same but carry water instead of blood. Perhaps it's our ability to understand the world we live in, but what is the point of knowledge if it's just for knowledge's sake? It is like writing a book just to throw it in the fire. Even our ability to improve ourselves is not exclusive. For example, the observations made by Darwin where the finches on the Galapagos Islands evolved their beak and skull structure to better hunt prey, and they didn't need five levels of political conference to do this either. We are not special. I mean, you are special in the way that you dance, or make art, or sing beautiful songs, but really you're not special in terms of comparison with other species. We just took our power and rolled with it, never thinking to ask what we were running over with it. But selfishness is one of the biggest sins of man. And we think we are self-aware, and yet we are the only species to self-destruct in the ways that we do. So obviously I, I went quite deep into that one just to untangle some roots of definition management. Yoga's ultimate goal is to recognise our true self and know that we are already joined with the ultimate cosmic consciousness, as we are the ultimate cosmic consciousness, expressing itself as what we are. As equally, and that word's important, as a leaf is also the UCC. Everything, every molecule, atom, grain of sand, etc. is the divine expression of ultimate consciousness, underneath the ego of man, of course. Let's have a quick look at gymnastics, which is thankfully a little simpler to define. Gymnastics is form and expression, but in a slightly more dense sense of the term. It is to do with strength, movement and body control. It is more competition with the self than cooperation with the self. The main problem is that the origins of yoga are particularly difficult to trace. As it was brought over to the West, it was a little lost in translation. Many even say that the Ashtanga sequence was based on the gymnastics routine, but 
Honestly, that doesn't really matter. The expression of the practice is irrelevant when we bring the correct intention to the mat. So, some gymnastics could be yoga and some yoga could just be gymnastics. However, it is the intention that you bring to the activity that distinguishes the difference. So, if I come into a yoga class, looking to be the bendiest, most flexible person in the room, outdo everyone else physically and push myself to the point where it hurts, then this isn't yoga as it was created to be. If I come into a gymnastics class, with my focus in my heart space, a smile on my face, open to learning and failing, as well as the option of humility, then this is closer to yoga than the aforementioned example. Yoga is a lot about humility, admitting where we can treat ourselves better, where we can honour the spaces that need attention and what we can work on in the future is a huge part of the practice. Yoga has many, many aspects to it and there is an entire philosophy around the subject. In Ashtanga Yoga, for example, there are eight limbs in which the physical practice is only one of them and this is called asana. There's pranayama, which is the breathing techniques used, yama, which are the moral disciplines and restraints, and there are five of these to note. There's niyama, which are the positive duties to undertake, of which there are five aspects to observe also, pratyahara, which is the withdrawing of the senses for ultimate focus, dharana, which is the focus itself, dhyana, the meditative absorption, and last but not least, Samadhi, which is the name for the goal of yoga, or the realisation of all your spiritual practices, often said to be synonymous with the word enlightenment. Another major problem is that when one walks into their first practice, they are unlikely to be aware of a lot of what I have just discussed. Until one researches or meditates or opens a dialogue with a knowledgeable teacher, it is like trying to learn how to swim by staring at a lake. If we wanted to include gymnastics in this analogy, we would say it's like building sand bridges across the water, forever destined to dissolve eventually, but may give one glimpses into the lake's nature with enough contemplation. I am a firm believer in past lives, however, and soul continuity, so in my view it is near impossible not to be practicing yoga or have some knowledge of it to some extent in virtually any activity undertaken. Just to conclude, yoga is the act of heart-mind coherence, in the effort of joining who we are with the ultimate cosmic consciousness, by shedding who we are not. It is self-exploration, self-love, self-awareness, but ultimately and slightly contradictory, it is the loss of the self, as in the ego self. So thank you for listening so much, and if you'd like a little more detail on the topic, or feel this is something I should explore more, uh, leave a comment down below or just message me. Thank you again. Bye-bye.